What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Super Gamer Boys. I'm your host, Colonel, and the most handsome dad, Garrett Morling. And here in the virtual studio with me is the king of video games and the pocket poppy, Adrian Homeboy <laughs> Holmes. What's up, Adrian? Oh, man, that still hits perfect. I love that name, dude. That's so awesome. <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Monday is uh, over and done with. That's, yeah. uh, that's really all I have to say about it. Thank goodness, because Monday was Monday and today. But I'm 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 doing good, I, man. I'm here. I was gonna say I'm right there with you, but <laughs> today is a while. Like, so this is my you had, my, look. This is my first seven days because I yeah. Last Monday was my last day at my job, so this is my first like week now. I've had a week where I'm unemployed, and so it's very much like just a strange day. It's strange. It's a, it's a different you, schedule. I got to get used to <laughs> until I get a new job. So yeah, I was gonna, I was about to agree with you. Like, yeah, today really Monday, and I'm like, well. It was, but it was fine. But a Monday it's, it's could be really Monday great. for you in a different way. It could be it, just because it, it Monday for me in one way doesn't mean yeah. that just because you, you're not working doesn't mean that a day can't be a day. That's true. I That's had true. plenty of days that were days when I didn't have a job. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Uh, no, today today actually wasn't wasn't too terrible. This morning, anyways. This morning, uh, I got to go out and uh, have brunch with some friends. They're visiting from Oregon. Um, they used to live down here. And like when we moved down here within a couple months, mm-hmm they moved away and like no why like they were such good friends (laughs) they knew the whole time they you know they've been friends with trudy since they were in high school like they grew up together and like i when i married trudy like i got to be good friends with them and so we got all excited oh we're finally gonna live in the same city you know and then then they moved away but they're visiting and they went out to brunch this morning and yeah it was good good time get a little date away from the kids that doesn't happen super often you know take it when you can less less often than you'd think uh you know getting a chance to get someone who can who's willing to watch the kids so it's nice to get that time and but yeah then the rest of the day it was kind of like all right well really all day it was just me sitting by my phone just staring at the email app waiting for that ping to come up for from the job i've been it'll interviewing come for, for it'll come it's been a month oh i hate it it'll Isn't come it crazy yeah it'll come trust the it'll process come. the right one will come <clears throat> but uh yeah other than that um we got some fun news tonight i feel like uh not a not a lot of downers not a lot of downers i feel like Good. recently there's times where it's like the news stories are just like wow this is kind of a big bummer but this uh, team got fired this studio blew up this game got canceled yeah and then re, re, revived and then canceled again there, there's one semi bummer, but the rest of them are great. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good time. Uh, so today we're gonna be talking about uh, how we've been playing Nintendo games on our iPhone, uh, Larian's update on future projects, and what PS5 Pro enhanced really means. But first, let's give a quick shout out to our Patreon producers, Bumple Smash and Kajoma Zero One, and our Super Gamer sponsors, Julie Bates, Mama Mare, and Carrie. Uh, if you want to be awesome, just like all of those folks, please head over to patreon.com slash supergamerboys where you can support us over there starting at just $1 a month. That's right. $1 gets you episodes early and ad free all month long, as well as exclusive access to our Patreon uh, only shows uh, like Super Later Boys. Episode six is up. There's, well, if my math is correct, five other episodes before that, all, all exclusive to Patreon <laughs> uh, that you should go check out as well. Uh, and we probably need to record another one soon to re- release for April. So also look forward to an episode seven soon here. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll talk more about our Patreon later on the show. Uh, I do want to give a huge shout out to Jack Sriracha, Yate, and DJ Truth for allowing us to use their music on our show. Make sure to check out the show description for links to their uh, uh, Apple Music and Spotify pages. And uh, yeah, if you're liking the music you're hearing today, it is a playlist featuring uh, Yate and Jack Sriracha. So yeah, be sure to check their stuff out. All right, Adrian. Yes, sir. It's now time to check the mail. And that means I need to boot up the old uh, Super Gamer Bot. So let's see. Hey, fellas, look at us on a question street. How long can we keep this going, I wonder? <laughs> Got that question streak going. That's right. You uh-huh. guys, you see, see, when you guys send in questions, you make Super Gamer Bot happy. And that's what life's all about, is just keeping Super yeah. Gamer Bot happy so that way they let don't them take do it, over. Let them, let them do their job. That way the AI doesn't take over the world and kill us all. 
<laughs> so Please. keep feeding Super Gamer Bot <laughs> questions, and then the world doesn't end. It's that easy, right? Done deal. Easy peasy. All right, Super Gamer Bot, do you mind reading that first question to us, please? Grim asks, you wake up as the CEO of Sony, Nintendo, or Xbox. You have full control of the next generation console design and direction. What would you do? <laughs> all right, all right. All so right. you are CEO of Insert Company here. What are you doing, Adrian? What are you doing with full creative control? Design, direction, next-gen console. Whew. Well, oh, if, I mean, if you're is... Xbox, you're not doing anything, right? They're, they're yeah, I'm not down. doing yeah. anything. <laughs> so you can count Xbox <laughs> out. I, yeah. I, I am flipping and flopping between doing Sony or doing Nintendo. Because I feel like I have a good grip on what both of those need right now. Um, I feel like as a precursor to one of the stories that we have to talk about later, I should probably <laughs> talk about Sony and okay, okay. <laughs> what what we should be doing here. Um, so here's the deal. Um, PS6 is just going to be I'm not going to sit here and be like Xbox and tell you, Oh, this is going to be the biggest technological leap in, in hardware history that you've ever seen. It's like seeing PS1 all over again for the first time. I'm not going to do that because that's not what gonna that's not what it's going to be, right? right? Graphics are just going to continue to get a little bit better and a little bit better, right? We've plateaued. It's just like phones. Phones were awesome when they first came out because they were, you know, pushing the limits, pushing the limits, and then they plateaued, and now you just get subtle increments every year. Yeah. Right. So that's probably what's go- what PS6 is going to end up with. 100%. Now, here is where it gets fun. We are not only putting out PS6, uh, which has a, a it, it's been designed by a sane person. Okay. <laughs> so it doesn't look like a router. It doesn't look like a panini, a panini press. It doesn't look like, <laughs> you know, anything of that nature. Okay. Right. Yeah. Just looks like a, a, a standard. Nice. It looks nice. But it doesn't look like, you know, uh, Seto Kaiba in his uh, white collared shirt or anything like that. <laughs> but same day. Or no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Same day. PSP is coming back. Oh, shoot. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it plays. It plays uh, PS6 games. Natively, PS- or is it like no. more like a PlayStation Portal kind of thing? No, it's not a portal. But let me let me. It's it's like it's it's the equivalent of if you had a PS6, right? Uh, and it's like playing Switch games undocked, but playing PS6 games undocked, right? So it has it's it's basically a scrunched in PS5. I see. That'll play PS6 games, but it's a PSP. So that way you can still get all your current games and play them on the go, but they may be, you know, at a, a 1080, uh, 1080, 60, you know, type of deal where it can handle it. Right. So it's basically like akin to a Steam Deck as far as its innards. OK, maybe like a, 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 a little bit beefed up because we we we're now some time removed from a Steam Deck. Right. So it's definitely something that can do a, a solid 1080, 60 for, I'd say, probably about three and a half, four hours. And then it can play whatever games come out on PS6. So essentially, it's your PlayStation on the go. Right. AKA a PlayStation, PlayStation Portable. Portable. Yeah, that checks out. <laughs> that checks out. Uh, PS5 or PS6 is going to be $499. Uh, PSP is going to be $349. Uh, $399. Um, just because of what you're getting for that package. Um, there's, no fi- and- uh, there's no disc version versus uh, digital version of the console? No. No, we're done with that dumb stuff. It's just going to be it's going to be a digital uh we're only going to sell the digital body. We'll sell the disk drive if you want the disk drive for the okay. old people in the audience. Um <laughs> Oh, however, I see. I see. So you're completely getting rid of the disk version. I was thinking you would just sell a disk version and but you're saying just sell a digital no, and force we're just people selling to digital and if, okay. right. And if you want the disk drive so bad, old people, you can get a disk drive, okay? <laughs> however, we are no longer selling physical games at stores. You got to get them straight through Sony. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. 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 We're done. Because you're not, you're not even going to sell like 
the codes at stores because that's that's something they used codes, to do. Yeah, no codes, that's some, codes. That's something yeah, they we'll used sell. to do, and then they stopped doing it. So you're yeah. saying that you would bring it back? That they sell I would codes bring out. codes back in stores. Yeah, to okay. to sell because what Best Buy stopped selling physical media, right? Target is lying, talking about. Oh yeah, we're getting rid of uh, movies uh, and 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 music, but we're gonna keep games. Yeah, they're gonna keep games for maybe like another, you know, three to four months, maybe six months until you stop thinking about it, and then they're gonna take them away. Don't yeah. let them fool you, okay? <laughs> so stores are getting rid of physical media, right? We we're done with that. So if you want the physical version of the game, if it's not like a limited run or an IM eight bit, it's only gonna be sold directly through the PlayStation Store. The not the um online PlayStation Store like you know playstation.com. You have to go there and order it. I see. So if there will be physical editions available, but it's through PlayStation's like direct or whatever it's called. Right. Right. Okay. Um okay. so put your money where your mouth is. You want that physical, you better go over there and buy it. <laughs> Um, just direct so, from like drop shift direct from the, 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 the uh, manufacturers you buy right. it, they print it, they stick a label on it and ship it right to your house <laughs> out off the press. Um, so PS6 is, um, I'm, I'm, it's not going to do 4k 60 because not even graphics cards and PCs. Oh, most of them are doing 4k 60 real talk. Um, you know, reliably if, if it's not a 4080 and up. Yeah. Right. True. Yeah. So we'll say it's going to ease it's going to comfortably do a 1440 uh 1440 120 right? That I I think that's reasonable. Um it'll have all the 2.0 uh Tempest engine uh uh DualSense 2.0 with all new haptics, all that jazz, blah 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 blah. Like I don't really care about the console part at that at this point. It's I'm really pushing for the PSP because we we yeah. need to go up against the Switch, big time. 100%. We missed the boat before. We need to come back and we need to hammer home that this is a PSP, just like the one that you thought of back in the day. This ain't a Vita. This ain't an offshoot. This is the this is the return of the PlayStation Portable that people know and love. And I feel like we're far enough removed. You wouldn't even have to call it a PSP two or the new no. PSP. Just call it PSP. Just call like, it PSP. It's I'm, been not, like, I'm not doing any gimmicks. It's anything. been like twenty it's years. Just PSP. It's been twenty years. Like people, right. people will know it's different than the one from twenty years ago, right? Like, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, um, and which so that's PSP, wild. That, that just hit me. That just hit me. For, <laughs> just to pause for a second. That the PSP was almost twenty years ago. That kind of blows my mind a little bit. It is twenty. Oh, oh yeah. Next year it'll be twenty years. Two thousand five. Right? Crazy. Oh, man. getting old, man. Getting old. <laughs> Don't like it. Don't like it one bit. Um. So yeah. Uh, the PS6 console done. Get it out. Uh, push it out. I don't care. Um, and then. PSP is really where I'm trying to put my focus on and make sure that 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 launches. We're not doing uh, uh, proprietary memory cards. We're not doing whatever crap we were doing before. You can use your SD cards. Um, honestly, I, I don't. You can use SD cards if you want, but I think the way the Steam Deck works with the the little um, uh, what do they have in there? The SDs. I think that would work yeah, perfectly. The, the my smaller. Yeah, SSDs, yeah. Uh, but they you got to make it e you got to make it user friendly. So you all you have to do is take off the back and then you can just unseat the one that you don't want and then put the one you do want in there. Done. Right? Cuz you got to be able to have the average user be able to do it. So that's done. Uh PSP is also dockable. You can hook up a dual sense to it. Uh when you dock it, it may get a little bit of a beefy boost because it's now it's on it's not relying on battery power so you can kind of overclock it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, maybe squeeze a little 144030 30 out of it. Who knows? Who knows? I'm going to let developers uh, handle that one. Um, but basically, yeah. So PS5, PSP, same day launch. Huge marketing campaign for both. There is no exclusive PSP game. There's no exclusive PS6 game. It's just one game that works across both. Right. I like that. I like that. Real quick, I do want to give a shout out. I know this is a live stream thing. So if you're if you listen to this later on when on podcast services, we do stream this live on Monday nights over on Twitch and YouTube. Make sure to follow us over there. 
Uh, shout out to Trouser Schnauzer, who just raided our channel. You may know him oh. as D DJ Trues, whose music we typically use on our show. Today, today's like the one day I'm not, and he raids us. I can feel kind of bad. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? His links will be in the show description as well. Thank you so much for the raid, Trouser Schnauzer. I don't know why it's <laughs> always so hard for me to say. Trouser Schnauzer. There we go. Appreciate it. <laughs> Adrian, I like what you're saying. I like what you're saying. I, I think I pretty much agree with see, with everything. You I, see I can't holes like, in it. Um, I mean, I think you're gonna have a lot of pissed off people about the digital only thing. But it's not digital only. Okay. Well, I mean, if they have to go to PlayStationDirect.com to purchase their games and buy a, a separate external what do you want disc drive, me to do? they don't want to carry physical games anymore. <laughs> what do you want me to do? That's true. It's not your fault. Um, I, I, that's that's my only concern is like you're gonna have a lot of people ticked off with with that. I, I guess my my only swap would instead of selling a digital version, sell it as like a disc ver like with a disc drive in it. Like ha have the disc drive available just by default <sighs> instead of adding instead of having like an attachment, just have it in there. Um, although. I don't know, but I, I like the idea of being able to like, because that takes up so much space. It and does, that, and that it forces, always makes the design worse. Right, like to not have it, you could have make the design, you could shape the box any like anything you want, but not right. have a disk drive because, yeah, I kind of like that idea. Maybe maybe we keep the disk drive out. <laughs> um, I really like the PSP thing, especially since it's been so long since we've had one, and I think it would destroy the Switch uh in 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 well i'm not saying i look wait wait oh, 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 yeah yeah I'm not I, was, crazy. I, I said that and as i left my mouth i'm like wait a second i'm not crazy <laughs> i'm not doing that I, no i'm talking i just want to have something out there i am I, <laughs> in no way talking about destroying anything you know how many how many have tried to climb that mountain and have failed and you've never heard about it again when's the last time anybody <laughs> mentioned atari Lynx? Um, that was going yeah. after game boy where is it at in no, a landfill I, somewhere. I think what I uh, um, was thinking when I said that, because I, I wasn't really thinking, but a I, there was a little thought going on there. Uh, what I kind of meant to say is, like, by destroying the Switch, I mean, like, <sighs> it, it could be a competition hardware-wise. Game-wise, Nintendo still stacks up. Like, that's what makes the Switch so killer, is, like, the game selection. Like, that you will right. never be able to beat. But I think the PlayStation Portable hardware-wise would would destroy like i that's the thing nintendo doesn't ch generally care about specs so i think the playstation portable could blow it out of the water and then at least be on par with having yeah ps6 exclusive games to play on your play portably holy smokes i like, gotta be crazy so uh that's what i meant by that i don't think by any means uh, playstation would ever like destroy nintendo no nintendo has a even me a as a CEO a, putting that out, a, I know we're going to get creamed. I'm not a, worried about that. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo has a very specific thing going on, and they do it extremely well. So unless they just out of nowhere just go under, just totally belly up, like as an, as an organization from like some unforeseen debt that was it's been due for hundreds of years that finally caught up with them or something <laughs> like, I don't know, they were at some curse from like ancient curse <laughs> that was like in 2000 years or your CEO is going to die and the company's going to fail. Like that's the only way I see anything bad happening. Nintendo is some ancient like curse from, uh, uh, I mean, you <laughs> might be on to something. One of the CEOs did die. So, oh, well, that's just the start of a lot of bad I mean, things, I guess. Oh man. <clears throat> but yeah, I like, I like everything you're saying. Um, I don't know if I have much more to add now. I guess I have to answer the question now. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't, I, I mean, this are you, is tricky. This is tricky. Xbox? What are you, what are you doing? This is tricky for me because you're smart. So like you just said all that stuff and sounded very intelligent. I'm going to say something and be like, I, I'm going to do this cause it'd be cool. Uh, well here, let's <laughs> do this. Let's, let's, let's do a, what do they call that thing? When everybody is throwing ideas at the board and seeing what oh, like, like, like a brainstorm collaborative brainstorm yeah. or something like that yeah i mean Let's so okay so i if we were to i i kind of want to go with xbox but okay. man it's it's just like the absolute opposite of the direction they're heading so it's this without completely just shutting game pass down or changing completely what game pass is i don't know how this works um, in what way are you changing it so because right now it's hard like 
I think the only way a console going forward, I mean, not that they can't have consoles, but for a console to be their bread and butter, like it is for, uh, or not, their, you know, kind of their staple uh, device that they're selling, mm -hmm. they would have to walk back the play anywhere thing, which doesn't make sense because it's like we've tasted that freedom to be like, sorry, you can't play Xbox games on PC now. And sorry, you can't stream them through game X cloud now would be a wild decision, but I feel like that's the extent they would have to go to make consoles relevant again for them. So really, I don't know if there's any saving <laughs> like an Xbox console at this can point. Can I but... can I can I throw in a megaton on yours okay. that yeah. I would have done had I been Xbox? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this one is gonna shake it's gonna shake foundations. Okay. Okay. It's gonna, it's go oh boy. I'm you wanna talk on. about getting headlines? I'm you holding ready? on to my desk. Here we go. Xbox from from now on is Game Pass only. No console? No, no, I mean we are no oh, longer they don't selling sell any games. games. We don't sell games. If it's coming to Xbox, it's coming through Game Pass. <laughs> Earthquake! Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and and I'm, I, I guess I should say I, I I'm doing that for um, Microsoft published titles, right? Yeah. So any Microsoft yeah. published title or any Microsoft Studios game, we're not selling it anymore. It's only going to Game Pass. So if you ever want to play any Microsoft exclusive game going yeah. forward, it's only on Game Pass. I we're think. not selling it. I think you're correct in that. That's that's probably their, the the most reasonable. Like my 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 thing would work, but it would piss everyone off. Your thing that's would what I'm work. Saying. It, your your it thing would work. Everybody and off. your thing would work and would probably still piss some people off. But also, I think most people would already have Game Pass. So exactly, who cares? And the I can't imagine don't, people buying the game. Actually, buying the game, it's it's got to be a, a on in the Xbox ecosystem is a minuscule amount. Versus yeah. people who have Game Pass. So just do it. Just push those people over to Game Pass. Yeah. Why? And why do you even have it? Why would you have an Xbox and not have Game Pass? Right. And I and I would even be willing to pay a little bit more if for the Xbox service. If Xbox Game Pass was $25 a month, but you get every Xbox game ever. Yep. Going forward for $25 a month, that's a steal. As well as. Considering and, games are $70 bucks a pop. And picking backing off what we uh, talked about last week, because we did this new story about Xbox having like their backwards compatibility, a new team they just put together, that mm -hmm. also including that in Game Pass, where there's like a huge backwards compatibility catalog from like a huge catalog yep. from Xbox, huge catalog from Xbox 360, and every current Xbox Studios game, on top of all the stuff that they also have from third parties and indies and stuff like that. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I would happily pay 20, 25 bucks a month to have that megaton, you know, like so much content, too much content. Cause that's still cheaper than buying. Like that's, that'd be like buying a game every three months, basically, which yeah. is what most one people, game. That's what a lot of people do anyways. You know, <laughs> like a lot of people are can't relate, are, but I understand. Uh, like, I, yeah. Like whether it's a, whether it's a, 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 a like a big triple A title or an indie title, like, I don't know. I feel like every two, three months, people are generally picking something up, whether it's big or small. So like, oh, okay, it's been 25 bucks a month to have access to to all of those titles at any time. Um, I think you're onto something with that. I don't I don't think that's uh man. Yeah, that's that's in my opinion, that's not as earth shattering as is I think you think it is, but also but then I think about people who are like diehard Xbox fans, they'd be like, What? I can't buy a disc of like I can't again. It wouldn't be diehard. Hard, no, because it, diehard it, Xbox fans already have Game yeah, Pass. They're not I worried so. about it. It's the diehard old yeah. physical people. Old physical that'll people. be like, or or old. I I need to own my stuff. People, which honestly, in this day and age where stuff is 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 raising in prices and things are getting taken off streaming services, I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say you don't have a leg to stand on based on what's been going on. Right. But at the same time, if oh. I'm Microsoft and I own this stuff, I yeah. own this stuff. I'm not worried about it going anywhere in this in this instance. So yeah. it's not that big a deal for me. Yeah. Like there has like just recently Ubisoft with was it the crew? They just pulled that completely from mm -hmm. uh, from storefronts. And even if you owned it, like if you if it's not installed on your computer right now, 
you cannot download it anymore either. They, like they totally took it. Like imagine that. This is <laughs> a racing game. Like I mean, granted, it had online features and stuff like that, but this is like. I think at offline as well. And they're just like, no, nah, it's just not available. Sorry. I don't care if you well, they didn't 60- want to renew all those car licenses. That's really what it was. Yeah. I'm, well, which is wild because like there's there's been there's other crew games out that are still available, like more recent ones. So it's like you'd think it all be like a be a package deal, but obviously not. Yeah. Um, so we know there's precedence for for losing stuff. And that's unfortunate. But I think of like the whole point of this is that that doesn't happen anymore, at least for Xbox published and produced games. Right. That wouldn't happen anymore. Um, and that would be great. Like basically for the rest of our lives, be able to just access Game Pass and play a game we play back, you know, play Halo 1 or whatever, whatever right. game is. Like 67, Fusion still have Frenzy access to Halo something. 1. <laughs> Um, Salks in the chat says, I would be on board with an entire library of Microsoft games, 25 a month for everything they've ever made and future releases. Stupid not to make that deal. Exactly. See? Yeah, so. Well, come on, Xbox. We got the solution for you. Um, <laughs> and as far as the I'm, console, I'm sh- yeah. I mean, I think I think it's right in line with your console idea for PlayStation. Like, we're at a point where graphics aren't going to get better. It's just going to come down to having uh, just to make sure it doesn't overheat um, and you know give us i want to get to a point where we can get at least 60 fps in most games and then even smaller games give us the get it get it up to the 120 like that's on the box mm-hmm. like it's on that's that's on the box now when i bought my ps5 it literally says 8k and 120 fps it's like they yeah, ought to be they ought to go to right. jail for false advertising like <laughs> okay. that 8k <laughs> yeah um so it's yeah I, let's let's get to a point where we can do that like graphics are already in an all-time high um they don't they don't need to get better like look at freaking senua saga hellbilly 2 Nuts. that game is insane imagine and it's unfortunately on consoles it's going to be locked at 30 imagine yep. playing that at 60 fps oh my gosh that would even just blow it out of the water so that's all i care about for a console if i had had any say over what the console is going to be it's like all right you know what? graphics is fine i don't care if it has the same uh you know general specs as the previous one just upgrade it just enough so we can actually hit the higher frame rate and the higher resolution there um call it a day we're good like it doesn't even need to be for 4k like no because most things now aren't native 4k it's 1080 or 1440 then up res so it's like all right, let's get it as, you know, 1440 would be great with uh, <laughs> with, with with what, what most people have. How many people are kind of playing around with 4K TV? Granted, 4K TVs are getting cheaper nowadays. Like, it's kind of turning into, like, all right, you can go to Walmart and get a 4K P. for, like, a couple hundred bucks, which is wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, granted, 4K at $200 and 4K at $3,000 is very different quality-wise, but... Right, but if I'm paying three thousand dollars for a TV, I'm I likely don't have a console. I have a I have a PC, right? If I'm if I'm not worried about image quality, uh, you know, maybe or it's it an stands inter- to or, reason, or it's, or it's an eighty inch entertainment setup in my basement, and having a nice console that could handle it would be nice. But um, yeah, either way, I I think I think the 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 frames and like the native resolution, getting it a little closer to four K, would be better. But even still, we've We've lived this long, this long with getting the the upscaled up res stuff, and most people don't even notice it. People don't realize it's no. not native 4K. So it's no. like, all right. And I know people who are playing their Switch and 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 having a blast and yeah. could not care less. And so you know what? It's yeah. honestly just you and me and Twitter who care about that kind yeah. of thing. We don't need any more hairs on people's faces. You know, it's cool that you can it's do nice. that, but it's, it's like it's impressive. But I don't need it. It's like, all right, I'm I'm not zooming in on on people's faces just to check out the hair follicles no. on there and then see if they have a zit on their nose. Like I don't care. Like it's just yeah. Zelda's sh- uh, cell shaded face made me cry just the same. Okay, yeah. Yeah. and it did. I couldn't see a hair on it. It it didn't matter. All right, yeah. so yeah. Uh, yeah, Selks even says, yeah, graphics are nice, but have you ever got a game that ha- had incredible story and features? I'm more on board with that. Friggin' Earthbound is still top tier for RPGs. Yeah. Absolutely, and Earthbound is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Ugh. Um. All right, well, that's it for our questions this week. It's about time to... Oh, yeah, news. I forgot we... <laughs> 
<laughs> we still got, we still we got all, do news. whole next part of the show here. Uh, it's now time for the Nerdy Newts. <clears throat> it's now time for the Nerdy Newts. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. There it is. All right. And here we are. This first news story comes to us from Taylor Lyles over at IGN. Delta, the free Nintendo emulator, launches on Apple's App Store. After Apple loosened its policies on allowing retro game emulators, developer Riley Testit launched a new free emulator on the App Store yesterday, offering support for several Nintendo consoles from yesteryear. In a blog post, Testit uh, revealed Delta serves as a successor to GBA for iOS, uh, which I had previously used um, back in the day. I had to, I, I, hacking in, hack and hack and quotes. You had to hack your iPhone. It wasn't actually like hack. I didn't have to jailbreak anything, but there was like a multi-step process and like things you had to like sign up for or like pay for a subscription. It was kind of a pain in the butt. So I used to use mm-hmm. GBA for iOS. It was great. Uh, I'm so happy Delta is finally on the app store. But anyways, let me finish the story. Uh, providing support for not just Game Boy games, but also NES, Sega Genesis, SNES, N64, and even Nintendo DS. More interestingly, Testit teased that they would support more emulators on the App Store listing, but did not specify which emulators exactly. Oh, interesting. So there's more emulators built into it, but he just didn't say? I'm telling well, you, dude, this is I wonder just the what ground they are. I wonder what they are. I wonder what... <laughs> I it wonder better what... be GameCube. It better be GameCube. Interesting. Okay, that would be cool. Yeah, I mean, we, we, yeah. Well, let me kind of we'll we'll talk more, but we 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 have thoughts. We have thoughts. Well, let me finish this article here. Uh, the app is free to download in Apple's official stores worldwide, including the United States. Those in the EU can download it through Alt Store Pay, a third-party marketplace released yesterday, thanks to EU's Digital Markets Act (DMA), which allows third-party app stores to be hosted within the App Store. As noted in a post on Twitter by developers, the Alt Store Pay cost $1.50 a year. The blog post explains the reason EU has to charge for those to use the third-party app store is due to Apple's not waiving App Marketplace's core technology fee. Thus, it was unsustainable to make the app free on this popular marketplace. Uh, the app itself is interesting because prior to Apple loosening up its policies, if you wanted to run an emulator on iPhone, you need to jailbreak it. Not entirely true, but whatever. Because <laughs> uh, I, like I said, I was able to use GBA for iOS without jailbreaking it. But uh, but the emulator would not have launched entirely on the App Store if not for Apple tweaking its policies earlier this month uh, to make it easier for the App Store to host retro game emulators. Though Delta is not the first Nintendo-themed emulator to drop on the Apple App Store, a few days ago, a developer released Bimmy NES. This NES emulator briefly appeared on the App Store before the developer removed it. On Mac Rumor Forum, the developer behind Bimmy NES said it pulled the app out of fear. <laughs> the developer did not go Coward. into further detail. It was likely due to Nintendo's prior history of going after emulators. The most recent example is the Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu shutting down after Nintendo sued them. The creators behind the GameCube and Wii emulator Dolphin announced last year that it was giving up putting the emulator on Steam after it revealed that Valve received a legal threat from Nintendo. Uh, real quick, I mean, the difference with Yuzu and... They were making money. And Dolphin being put on Steam is they were going to charge for both of those, right? Like, that wasn't that the thing? Like, they were going to charge for Dolphin on Steam and then Yuzu, they were also had a Patreon where... Yep. GBA for iOS, as far as I know, other than the weird like server subscription you had to pay for, which technically was separate than the app, you weren't paying for the app. You were paying, <clears throat> you were the subscription is for like a server to connect to in order to get it to run on your phone. Um, and I think that's how they get around it. And now that's not even available, now it's just free. So mm-hmm. I don't think they should be in any danger. But, um, anyways, this is amazing. This is so great. Uh, you were rubbing it in my face a couple weeks ago about you getting the analog pocket, and then they dropped this. I'm like, hey, take that. I always have my Game Boy in my pocket, Adrian. <laughs> and it looks You think I don't keep my, my, my pocket great. on me? Come on now. <laughs> that doesn't leave my bag. Are you kidding? Um, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, uh, all right. Shoot. Yeah. No, I got it. it. I got it. Yeah. No, this is awesome. This is amazing. Uh, I. I, I can't believe that it took this long but then again we are talking about apple who loves to rule with an iron fist um but now that it's relaxed a little bit i have seen people go nuts online with with delta 
And uh, I don't, I, I really think we're just at the the tip of the iceberg with what people are going to do with not only Delta, but other emulators when they come out. Because Delta, trust me, is not going to be the only emulator by a long not. shot. Yeah. It would be nice, though, because I want all my stuff in one place. I don't want to have to have multiple right. emulators for I, I would prefer for Delta systems. to expand. Yeah, to keep right. offering more and more things within it. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, but Delta, is it, it looks great. Uh, it's very, you know, not very light. Doesn't seem like it's hogging a lot of resources. It runs right. games great. Um, so I can only see them. Number one, I think the biggest thing for me is uh, they got to figure out a way to get online services going um, because just this week, um, all my friends are, are playing games on Delta and they were talking about playing Pokemon and they were asking, well, how do we trade them? And I had to say, well, there's no online yet, but you know, there may be some down the road. So if I'm that developer, I'm looking into, you know, how can we make this happen? Whether yep. it's peer, uh, P2P, uh peer-to-peer -peer servers or like can we rent some kind of server space and you know let people subscribe to it i don't know whatever what would, we can do oh, what would be so good is if there's just it was just a bluetooth feature where it's just like a local so that just bring back the good old days where you had to be like because remember the gba Around and each stuff other? like that yeah you had to like use the link cable so imagine if they're like all right you got to use your blue and then bluetooth's range is like what like use like 30 40 feet so imagine if they like Hey, yeah, you we've added online features, but it's just like the good old days where it's using your Bluetooth and you got to get within range of each other. It's like I, I would love that. Like, yeah, it's convenient to just send it over the internet, but I also love the idea of being like, no, you gotta you gotta meet up with your buddy and uh, in order to trade that Pokemon or to play Mario Kart or whatever. Like, that would be kind of your sick, Gengar honestly. is gonna have to wait, brother. I'm not going all the way down to LA <laughs> to trade you for a Gengar. <laughs> You're gonna have to wait. Oh man. Um. Yeah, I, I'm I'm freaking loving this. Yeah, the app itself, super clean design, super easy to use. Uh, what I loved is since I'd used GBA for iOS back in the day and linked it to my, uh, you have the ability to link it, like back up your saves and your ROMs to uh, Dropbox and, and or Google uh, Drive. Um, and so I just logged back into those and immediately all my saves were back. My ROM, oops, sorry, just knocked the mic. My saves were back, my ROMs were back, like every, my save states even, like even because you can do like save states mid game. So like I I jumped into like one of the Pokemon games and there was like a million save states where like before certain battles, like I would, I was kind of scumming it a little bit because I, there was so, I forget what game it was. Was it Ruby I was going through and I wanted to hundred percent, I want to catch everything. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't want to waste any Pokeballs, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, I'm going to do a safe state right here before the battle. And then, you know, Cheating. Kind of save, save scum it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm playing a Pokemon game on my phone. Like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, it, it was just amazing, though, to me, like I logged in and all my stuff from years ago just popped back up. It was kind of fun, like it's time capsule from 2000. It was from 2021 is the last time I'd used it. And so like from all these saves from 2021, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. <laughs> it's um, all coming back. And then, yeah, it's easy to add stuff, add new content. Um, you can add skins, like change the look of your different players, which is fun. So I even on my my Game Boy Color games, I have it so it loads up and it's like the atomic purple, like the clear purple one. Um, that's what I had as a kid was like the see through clear purple one. And I was like, oh, this is so good. So nostalgic. I love it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, as far as like you were talking about, all right, hopefully this is a, a, a step forward and there's more to come. Uh, one of the comments that we kind of talked about before the show is I just want to reiterate it because it was so good because we were both were on the same wavelength. We were going to say the same thing. It's like, all right, where's the PlayStation? Where's the GameCube? Where's the Wii? Where's the 3DS? Where's because at this point, like if I can play freaking <clears throat> Death Stranding and Resident yes. Evil Village on my phone, why can I not play Super Mario Sunshine? Like, what's the deal? <laughs> why I can't I play able to Smash play Sunshine Brothers Melee? At, at 60 yeah. on, on, on my iPhone, no problem. Give, if it's running Death Stranding. Are give, you kidding? Freaking give me PS2 games. Like, if I can play Death Stranding, I should be able to play anything, anything. I want on this phone. Like, <laughs> like... Oh man, I I cannot wait for the day for that to happen. Pull around I, and it, let me fi let me find out I could play Crazy Taxi anytime, anywhere. Uh, well, oh, oh, I know there crazy, was an app back in the day. It's not the same. 
It's not no, 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 no. Crazy Taxi. Was that Genesis or Dreamcast? That was Dreamcast. Okay, okay. Because this, because Delta has uh, uh, Genesis, Genesis. That's all. I think. Yeah, yeah but Dreamcast but, it does not. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I'm loving Delta. Delta's great. I highly recommend it. Um, it's yeah. It's that's the fact that it's so easy. Like you don't have to jump through all the hoops anymore. Is this like a quick app store download and like boom, all my stuff was there. Play any game I want. I'm like this is great. The future is here and it is fantastic. Awesome. The future oh, rules. The future rules. I just hope. I I hope nothing bad happens to them. Like it seems like every they're doing everything by the book like everything's good so far like they're not charging for anything like i i can't think of any reason it's too late i already got it downloaded brother you can't yeah. take it now it's on I, the phone i'm just worried like because again if we want stuff moving forward the only thing that's going to stop that is if nintendo throws a lawsuit out there so that's like my biggest fear is like all right like i don't foresee that happening but man that what a, what a bummer that would be is all of a sudden they're like oh shut it down you owe us four million dollars <laughs> oh. like uh uh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I think they're okay. I think I don't. I don't think Nintendo is gonna give that much of a, a a stink about it, just because Apple is the one that's in control, and that's one of the few companies that they can't push around and bully. Yeah, but it's not Apple's allowing it, but it's not Apple. But Nintendo app. can't go to app right. But N- Nintendo can't go to Apple and be like, take this off the store. And Apple, Apple, and Apple, you know, doesn't not have a choice, right? Apple could be like, "Piss off! What are you talking about? What are you gonna do?" <laughs> right, right, yeah. Well, we'll see. Time will tell. But in the meantime, get on it, download this, get use on it. it. It's fantastic. Um, and I know all you people, the Android's gonna be like, well, "We've been able to do this the whole time. Nobody not- cares. Yeah, exactly. No That's- one cares. We don't the cool care. kids have it now. Okay, now we have it. It's cool now." And sorry you know what just let us be happy okay that's we, what's up we let you be happy for the last like 10 years let <laughs> us be happy now like all right let's be cool everyone be cool chill Video out cool. <laughs> all right uh what with that let's move on to this next news story let's do it this next news story comes to us from rick lane over at uh, pc gamer Instead of making Baldur's Gate 4, Larian is working on two new projects based on its own IPs, and CEO Sven Vink reckons it'll result in the studio's best work ever. I believe him. Larian might have decided against making Baldur's Gate 4, but the studio is already hard. Excuse me. Got a hiccup. Ooh. <laughs> but the studio is already hard at work outlining its next project, or should I say projects. In its latest community update shared on Steam, Larian revealed that in lieu of another Baldur's Gate sequel, is currently developing two new projects. As an independent studio since 1996, we value the freedom to follow our creativity wherever it leads. In this case, after six years in the Forgotten Realms and much discussion and rumination, we've decided to seize the opportunity to develop our own IPs. We're currently working on two new projects and we couldn't be more excited about what the future has in store. The update continues to say that it's still early days for these projects, which is fair enough given Baldur's Gate 3 is still less than a year out from 1.0, and that Larian will share more info later down the line. But the studio does want its fans to know that the sensibilities that brought you Baldur's Gate 3 are alive and well, and that Larian remains driven to create immersive experiences shaped by your choices. To further quell any concerns away, uh, about its shift away from Baldur's Gate, Larian shares some words from excited Sven Vink. Uh, I assume that's how you say his name, Vinky, Vink. Uh, I don't know if we're going to pull it off, but looking at our narrative, visual, and gameplay plans, I think what we're working on now will be our best work ever, Larian CEO says. I get excited like a kid watching the key imagery, want to show it to everyone now, and grumble in frustration at having to wait until it's actually all working. Vink himself admits that this is hype. <laughs> Talk that talk. Talk (laughs) that talk. Weird way to say that. Larian, talk that talk. But given Larian has just delivered one of the best games ever made, they're probably allowed a little excitement about the opportunities that success affords them. As for what these new projects might be, it's interesting that Larian uses the phrase develop our own IPs rather than develop new IPs. Personally, I reckon one of these projects will be a new Divinity game, probably Original Sin 3. The other, meanwhile, will be something entirely new, though still probably an RPG. Although Larian is moving on from Baldur's Gate 3, it isn't done with its latest game yet. 
The studio also revealed its plans for the upcoming Patch 7, which includes new mod tools, uh, new fully voiced and scored cutscenes for evil endings to the game. And for a developer that keeps telling us how done it is with Baldur's Gate, Larian sure seems to be adding a lot to its beloved RPG. <laughs> So, uh, I'm I'm stoked, stoked about yeah. this. Uh, Baldur's Gate Three is an incredible game, and the fact that now they can just take everything they've learned and made in those games and make it their own. Holy cow! Can I? Like, <laughs> can I? Can I real quick just talk about how proud I am of them? Do it. Of deciding to 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 see their success for Baldur's Gate. And to say, you know what? We did what we wanted to do. We saw our vision through. We made the game that we wanted to make. People love it. That's enough. That's enough for us. We can leave it alone and we can go on and do the next thing. That takes a lot of uh, maturity to see when it's time to, to hang it up. You know, go out on top. Always leave them wanting more. And... I really respect them for making that decision to say, you know what, we've had, we've, we've done Baldur's Gate. We did it well, we did our job. Now we want to move on to something else to, to challenge ourselves a different way. So shout out to them. Um, that is a great look. That is something that you rarely, if ever, see um, as far as gaming development and studios are concerned. So, and man, just honestly, to put that out there. Like, they'll be way better off for it because the, I mean, they wouldn't be where they are without Baldur's K3. Like, they needed that. Right. But now that they're where they're at, man, they can just continue to just get bigger and better and grow on their own because they're going to be able to make more money and continue to fund their awesome ideas with this new technology that they've been able to develop and continue to develop and continue to in, uh, uh, innovate. Um, yeah, this is props to them for killing it and then being willing to just like all right, instead of just taking the easy money mm -hmm. let's go out on our own and do what we know works uh with ips that we know are great and just kill it and probably be way better off for it in the long yep. run so yeah it's exciting uh it's super exciting and yeah super excited to see what comes out so divinity is one of their games now what are, i'm trying to remember do they have any other ips other than divinity or I Maybe feel like that's their big one. I wouldn't be surprised if they had another, a, a couple smaller scale things that they worked on in the past that they might want to pick back up again. So I don't know okay. too, too much about them. I just Here, know that they, they make divinity. Yeah. So here's their uh, kind of list of games. So back in 1997, they made a game called the LED Wars. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, 2002, we had Divine Divinity. 2004, Beyond Divinity. 2009, Divinity 2. Uh, and then two thousand, yeah, it, 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 as well as called Ego Draconis, and then two thousand ten we had Divinity Two Flames of Vengeance, and then they went back to. This is so conf their naming scheme so confusing because they had two Divinity games and two Divinity Twos, and they're back to Divinity Divinity Dragon Commander Divinity Original Sin, twenty seventeen Divinity Original Sin Two. Then now Gate those three. two I've heard of. Those two are the ones that everybody talks yeah. about. As 2014, real, real good. 2014, 2017, whereas Divinity uh, Original Sin one and two. Um, so they're definitely the most recent, more modern games. Uh, but so other than Divinity, it seems like their only other IP that they have is the LED Wars. <laughs> and I assume that's not what they're going to. I be guess they're on. doing LED Wars too. Here we go. Oh, I take that back. They've also made educational games. <laughs> Which they also could. Look. They have Monkey Tales, Monkey Labs, Gully Land. Cat With their kick. ability to do storytelling <laughs> and different outcomes and predict things now, they could make a heck of an educational game. Just throwing that out there. Dude, imagine. Just throwing that out there. All the mechanics of Baldur's Gate 3 with with none of the sex. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It's it, it's Baldur's Gate for kids. Baldur's it's literally Gate Baldur's kids. Gate for kids. Do it. Make like, oh my gosh. Yeah. They very well that. could. Just make Baldur's Gate clean and then I can just set it up my, with my kids. You can finally and they play can, it with your boys. They yeah. can play like, play D&D, &D, you know, on the computer. And You don't um, have to wait another 15 years to, 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 to <laughs> let them play it. <laughs> exactly. Man, honestly, that would be killer. That would be killer. Let's let's get that. Come on, Larian. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I'm excited about what's next from them because Baldur's Gate three. I did not finish it. I put a lot of hours into it, um, which is surprising to me. I, you were really, really into it. It's a huge game. I put a ton of hours in it. And I, I, I think I'm only just getting into Act two, and I think there's three whole acts. It's like imagine, like I basically put. I think I put like 20 to 30 hours in the game and I only got through one act. Like that's insane. And the other acts are bigger from what I've heard. So Isn't that a good like, thing? Yeah, no, it's great. But that's, you know me, like long games. That's fair. That's fair. Long games like I can can lose me at times. And, and you know what? Baldur's Gate 3, I picked up Baldur's Gate 3 and then like two weeks later, I picked up Armored Core 6, which was my game oh, of the year last year uh, before uh, I played Dredge. So, you know, game of the year came out a couple weeks later. Imagine the game being that big and you can't play it the same way twice. That is wild. Yeah. That's nuts. That's crazy. Crazy. I mean, you could, but yeah, you'd have to do like exactly the same. Ex- you <laughs> can't like miss a prompt decisions. or yeah. nothing. Um, Lula in the chat says weak. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> 168 Lula. hours, she says, and she's just now in act two. Oh, my crazy. God. <laughs> yeah, well. I'm not that crazy. Uh, it is so fun. It is. I great. mean, it's and it's, it's fun. It's on, yeah. and it's fun co-op too. Like I, that's that's my other problem. It's like I put a ton of hours in like single player, and then uh, like Nate and Dan were like, "Hey, jump in the game with us." So then I like put my game on pause and like played like for quite a while with them, and it was a ton of fun. But yeah, you can just get lost so easily because like mm-hmm. I have like multiple saves now with like with people, without people, different characters, and it's like I just need to. Really, that's my should be my goal by the end of 2024 is like, let's get through Baldur's Gate 3 because, I mean, yeah. I I know it's incredible and people just keep singing its praises and, man, be, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Lula says she's just out there exploring a lot and looting everything. That's you're forgetting the you're forgetting the the biggest part of, of Baldur's Gate from what the Internet says. You're not out there touching enough butts. What are you doing? <laughs> They got to touch all the butts. Get to it. <laughs> Slap some rears. <laughs> oh my God. So good. Um, yep. So with that, uh, look forward to what Larry has in store. I, I can't imagine we're going to hear anytime soon. Now, wait, real quick. have you, Do you know, is there any DLC or extra content that we know of coming to Baldur's Gate 3? Or nope. Just, okay. Nope. So what they we've got. They said they're done. They're not doing okay. anything else. Okay. Every, everything else is just bug fixes and polish and that's it they okay. are done i thought i'd heard that but i just wasn't sure i couldn't remember exactly so okay yeah that is why i mean i get it it's a massive game like if you're not happy with what there is then get over yourself like it ain't on. for you but at the same time the opportunity to just support it forever with dlc they like again they could have easily just kept pumping out like side quest side stories forever and just like made and that's so why much I respect money. the heck out of them they're like no yeah. we don't need to do that we did it already we did what we wanted to do that's true they Peace. told their story and they got and gone and i'm gone yeah before four things got bad <laughs> that's the yeah that's the thing things can all of a sudden they put out one bad dlc and everyone remembers how bad the game was and forget, exactly forget that just it was leave, every, everyone's game of the year <laughs> leave them wanting more yeah man all right, this last news story comes to us from The Verge, written by Tom Warren. Sony wants 60 FPS PS5 Pro enhanced games, but it's happy to settle for less. That's <sighs> just the words Adrian loves to hear. <laughs> Sony settling for less. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get <laughs> it. Sony is working on a new high-end version of the PS5 codenamed Trinity and likely to to debut as the PS5 Pro later this year. The Verge confirmed leaked specs about the PS5 Pro earlier this week, and we've also obtained details on how existing and new PS5 games can be enhanced to take advantage of the PS5 Pro hardware. Sony is also working on an ultra boost mode for older games to make them run better on the PS5 Pro. Sources familiar with Sony's plans tell The Verge that Sony is asking developers to create a new PS5 Pro exclusive Mm. graphics mode in games that combine Sony's new PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short, upscaling to 4K resolution with a 60 FPS frame rate and ray tracing effects. Insider Gaming first reported on some of these enhanced PS5 Pro game details last month. While Sony wants this new game mode in game, uh, this new mode in games, the PS5 Pro and quote unquote enhanced label 
will still be available for a variety of other scenarios that include 30 FPS games. Developers have the option of increasing the target resolution for PS5 Pro games that run at a fixed resolution on PS5 or even increasing the target maximum resolution for games that run at a variable resolution on PS5. That could mean that we could see PS5 Pro enhanced games that run at between 1080 and 1440p resolution at 30 FPS on the base PS5 and run between 1280 and 2160 on the PS5 Pro at the same frame rate. A fixed resolution increase from 1440 to 2160 would also qualify as a PS5 Pro enhanced game. Developers could also choose to enable ray tracing effects and get the PS5 Pro enhanced label without improving resolution, resolution or frame rates. So if a developer wants to target 60 FPS instead of 30 FPS with the same resolution, this may also qualify as a PS. So I'm going to sum it up because that's a lot of just word salad. If a game wants to get the PS5 Pro enhanced label on the box, it has to do only one of these three things. And I'm going to editorialize a little bit. I don't like that it's only one of three things. I wish it was at least two of these three things or even all three things. But here they are. They either A, have to uh, raise the resolution of the game. B, I can't remember if I said A or 1 at the beginning, but either way. You said I'm going A. Out. Okay, good. B, <laughs> raise the frame rate to at least 60 FPS. Uh, or C, flip a switch. I assume it's because I'm, you know. I know everything about game development. You flip the switch to turn on ray tracing. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a literal single <laughs> switch. If they walk over to the closet and flip the ray tracing switch and all the computers start generating ray tracing in the games. Um, I'm, uh, I'll finish the article here before we get our full opinions here. Simply running a game at more stable frame rate on PS5 Pro is not enough for enhanced label. Though, uh, and Sony also won't add the label to games that run with a variable resolution and see increased resolution on the PS5 Pro that doesn't improve the maximum resolution. So if a game moves from 1440 to 2160 variable to 1800 by 2160 variable, it's still not qualified for the enhanced label because as you can tell by those numbers, the top end is still 4K. So doesn't not technically enhance it's the same exact thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just more stable is all uh developers will need to update their games to sony's latest sdk to take advantage of the ps5 pro features but some games that haven't been updated will benefit from better performance on the upcoming console i understand that the ps5 pro will have an ultra boost mode that will help variable uh what is vrr variable resolution refresh rate. i know that's what it stands for but oh refresh rate rr yeah that makes sense both of those words start with R. Some yep. gamer. <laughs> hey, reading's hard, dude. I'm a gamer, not a reader. <laughs> Get it? Uh, <laughs> that will help VRR modes run uh, at a higher frame rate, and games with a variable resolution may render at higher resolutions. Overall, frame rates may be more stable in certain games, too. Sony does warn developers that many unpatched games won't show improvements in this Ultra Boost mode, though. Games that run at a fixed resolution and graphical settings for fixed rendering resolutions won't show improvements. Uh, there's more of this article. They Basically, literally put that in there just so people won't ask about Bloodborne. Yeah. Basically, at the end of the day, <laughs> if you want the enhanced label, you only have to do one of those three things. And it's all up to the, Sony is putting it all on the developers. They're saying, hey, if you want it, come and get it. If you don't, we're not going to push you in there, anything. We're not going to give you any extra cash to help out. Uh, which I think which is a is mess. Crazy. Which is a mess. If I was Sony, I'd be like, "Hey, here's some, here's a little extra money. Put out the PS4, uh, the PS5 Pro enhanced, because that will only help sales of this console, right? So why wouldn't they invest in all these studios? And be like, here, do this. Uh, and the fact that their their standard is only doing one of those three things is it's, wild to me. Like. If Jim Ryan came and said, I want you to buy this PS5 Pro for $599 yeah. and some of the games that are updated for PS5 Pro are only going to be able to run at 1080. I'm giving him a swirly. I'm giving him a swirly. I'm, I'm dunking his head in the toilet. What are you, you $600 <laughs> and you're giving me 1080? Now, look, I know I, I've, I'm the guy who is like, I really could care less about these kinds of things, right? I only do like pixel peeping when the when the when the company is touting this thing, right? So mm -hmm. 
I don't I don't get on Nintendo's case about their games being 720 because they don't talk about that. They don't talk about being powerful like that, right? But Sony and Xbox are the ones that are talking about PSSR and, and Xbox talking about this is the most powerful console in the world. When you start touting that stuff, then I'm gonna start holding you to it. Because yeah. now that's what you're trying to sell me on is this is this hardware, this experience, right? That I'm supposed to be having. So if you're coming to me and you're telling me PS5 or PS5 Pro is only going to be able to run games at 1080, some but games are only going to be able to run at 1080. But it's 60 FPS now, Adrian. Or it has ray tracing now, Adrian. It's $600. <laughs> and, and that's that's speculative. It could be yeah. 649 Yeah, we have no idea. We have no idea. I mean, at, at the rate they've been going, the fact that they... <laughs> <laughs> they came if, out with a if, PS5. If they came out with a pro. They came out with a PS5 Slim, and the price went up. It that's, went up. That's not a good sign for what the Pro is going to cost. Like usually, the Slim model does the opposite. Like usually, the Slim model comes out and it drops a hundred dollars. This one, when they came out with PS5 Slim, they're like, "Eh, let's bump it up fifty bucks." Like, wait, what? What are we doing? Here? Sell me a Pro console and 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 have games running on it at thirty frames a second. You're going in the garbage can. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, I assume. So here's my speculation. There should on what be I, no game on. Sorry, I'm, I didn't mean to cut you off. There should be no <laughs> game that is PS5 Pro enhanced that is not running at 60. End of story. End of story. Yeah. I Here's what I anticipate happening. Here's my theory uh, or hypothesis. The consoles, uh, PS5 Pro is going to come out. There's going to be a lot of games with a PS5 Pro enhanced. But it's just going to be resolution. It's we're not going to get the frame rate that we want. It's going to be resolution. It's going to be ray tracing. No, which is I would. I guarantee you. I guarantee you because a lot of the games we play now, we play it outputs in 4K and we're playing on a 4K TV, let's say. But technically, it's only running at the 1080p and being upraised. So I think right. what a lot of people are going to be is like, like seeing that on a box native 4k and ray tracing like those are all the buzzwords right now that's what's gonna that's what i think unfortunately most of the developers who get in on this are gonna do because that's probably the easiest thing to do to do a quick up res of assets or not even an up res like most all the assets that's are probably are high res already they're just not mm -hmm. outputting or rendering at high res so they're like i i i i most game i mean just look at freaking horizon uh forbidden west like all those assets i'm sure are at 4k or higher resolution but they have Absolutely. to they have to force they're forcing the game in the back end to render it lower so the ps5 can handle it so mm -hmm. basically they're just going to unlock that um and then flip us flip the switch in the closet i was talking about for ray tracing um so like those are the two quote unquote easiest things i know there's a lot more to that don't don't at me, game developers. I know there's more to it than that. But I assume that's going to be the easier thing to do than than the frame rate, which because frame rates, I know, can be tied to other in-game things and, call, you know, requires more coding and stuff. I know I get I've heard all the things, but frame rate is what we would like. That's Please. what we I, I'm throwing. I'm throwing uh, ray tracing away every time. Every I, single time. ray tracing is a cool gimmick to turn on for about 10 minutes when I play Cyberpunk 2077 and then turn it off immediately. So that way I, my frames go back up to like, because when it's on, my frames are at like 30 FPS. And when it's on my P, I'm talking about my PC, I'm not playing on my console. And when mm -hmm. I turn it off, they go up to like 140 FPS. So it's like, of course, I'm going to play this game at 140 FPS, you know, uh, without the ray tracing, because Cyberpunk 2070, uh, 2077 looks gorgeous with or without the ray tracing. Like, it looks right. cool, but you turn it off and like, oh, this game still looks really good without it. Most games do, because um, that's what we're all used to anyways. Like, yeah, it looks cool, but it's like, oh, there's, I don't know. It's not enough to bog down my system with when I'd rather just play at a high refresh rate and a higher resolution. So if I had to pick two out of the three, it would be resolution and frame rate. Every time, but I guarantee you, most people are going to give us the resolution and, and ray tracing because of well, the whole, yeah, because of the gimmick. Be like, hey, right, you had ray tracing on your PC, now you got ray tracing on your PS5. It's like we don't care. No one used it on the PC. No one wants <laughs> it. 
<laughs> we turn it <laughs> off because it kills my system. I can't play cyberpunk. Like if I wanted to stream cyberpunk, I wouldn't uh, uh, turn on ray I tracing because it'd crash my computer. So the second OBS yeah. turned on and I hit still go live, my computer would blow a puff of smoke out the back. Immediately. And that would be it. So it's like not practical. I don't know. Sorry for that little rant there. But what are your thoughts on this, Adrian? <laughs> <laughs> I said them already. I, yeah, I said it's, it's ridiculous. Did. It's ridiculous. Um, I, I, honestly, honestly, I this this uh, this makes me feel so much better about not waiting and just getting another base PS5. I'm good. I'm good. Right, because you just if got this is what you just we're got getting, a PS5 Slim, and you almost were thinking about waiting till the Pro. But yeah, I feel like you would have paid a lot more for what less. is essentially a PS5 <laughs> Plus. Yeah. It's a PS5 I, extra. It's not a pro. Yeah, I do like the idea of the ultra boost mode where games that aren't uh, aren't technically enhanced. Uh, it can do things in the back end to help the resolution and the frame rate. Like it, it, what, it what it reminds me of is. Yeah, but that's that only if it's not if it's not hard coded. So like a game right. would have to be a frame rate have to be uncapped for it to be improved. A resol resolution would have to be variable for it. So if yeah. somebody if a developer hard coded a game to be 1080, no effect. Right, right, exactly. But I just like, I, I, cause it was, didn't Xbox do that with the Siri or was it the One X? Was it? I, it was I, One X and the series where they were yeah. doing the, but the it upgrade. started, it, but it that's started, cause they went into the code and did it. Yeah. So yeah, but it was originally with the One X. Like when they did that, like that's basically what this ultra boost mode is. It's kind of doing what it originally did on the One X or whatever, and not into all, you know, continuing on with the series S and X. Um, and so like I like the idea of that, but you're right. Like how many games are gonna be able to even utilize that? Might not be a lot, unfortunately. Um uh, Silk so says PlayStation out here rinsing Sony ponies every last of every last dime. They 100%. really are. They oh, really like, are. Uh, Kaj and Kajoma says, and they all say, thank you, sir. Can I have another? They sure do. <laughs> truth. Truth. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. PS5 Pro is sounding like a scam to me, man. Just, yeah. I'm just the, the way. We, of course, we don't have any hard facts or hard, you know, it's anything about it. We don't even know if it's actually, you know, a thing. I'm not going to sit here and act like it is. There may be a reports, but until Sony comes out and says that PS5 Pro is happening, it does not officially well, exist. Apparently, the leaks have been confirmed somehow. The Verge has another article. It, they haven't linked here. PS, Sony's PS5 Pro is real and developers are getting ready for it. So somehow they've gotten... Right, by their sources. I'm saying until Sony says it. Right, true. It's not official. Yeah. It's nice to speculate, and I'm sure... Look common sense wise of course there's they're working on something right but i'm saying we don't know facts a to z until sony comes out and says this is what this console is and this is what it can do they have a track record though that precedes them and it doesn't look it doesn't bode well for them so that's a lot of our opinions that's where it's coming from it's coming from experience unfortunately so i just hope i hope we can be surprised i hope they come out yes. and do change our mind on this and be like, oh no, this actually is a good thing. And they're they they're gonna push for good things from it. But again, they're it, yeah, Selk says it in the chat. History speaks volumes, exactly. It does, it does, <laughs> it does. Boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, yeah, well that's what a company. All I got for that story. I just stay tuned, I guess. If it's supposedly coming out at the end of this year, I assume we hear about it either at Summer Game Fest or maybe in the fall. But I assume, no, I, I assume too late. I, yeah, I feel like Summer Game Fest, we'd have to hear about it in order to get people hyped for the winter release, the, the holiday you release. You got to give people stuff. time to save up that $700 <laughs> that they're getting ready to drop. I love how every time you say the price, it's like a, a little bit more, like $50 or more. You just keep it incrementally it's, increasing. It's, it. it's Sony, dog. What are, what are you going to do? <laughs> are you going to not play GTA 5 at 60 frames, huh? Yeah, that's where they're going to get everyone. It's going to be like, oh, mm -hmm. the only way to play uh gta 6 uh 4k 60 fps with ray tracing is on the ps5 pro and everyone's gonna be like okay anything i'm you fine want. nope anything i'm good or download that game or just buy it get it for pc they didn't say it's coming to pc yet oh really no mm. rockstar has not said it's coming to pc yet interesting uh Selk says gta 5 on the samsung smart fridge 4k <laughs> you joke I, <laughs> but with Game Pass, you joke, but it could be a thing. It could be. 
Samsung and, and Xbox are like this. Yeah, it's so on you the TVs. very well could get Game Pass is yeah. built into the TVs. So. That's actually kind of brilliant, right? While you're cooking breakfast, you can keep your kids occupied. Let them play games on the fridge. Here, play some Hades for a couple minutes, and uh, yeah, while your <laughs> pancakes cooking over here. Oh boy! All right, that is it for the news stories this week. Uh, now it's time for our Patreon ad. Crank it up. <laughs> This is the part of the show where I tell you to go over to patreon.com slash supergamerboys and support us over there for just starting at just $1 a month. That's right, $1, you get episodes early and ad-free, such as this show, uh, as well as our Patreon-exclusive show, such as Super Later Boys, uh, and our previous seasons of Super Gamer Book Club. We have season one over there, hosted by one Zetch Keenan, a previous host of the show, um, available only to those Patreon sub- supporters. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, as I said, all the ad-free uh, versions of Super Gamer Book Club Season 2 and this show, Super Gamer Boys. So be sure to uh, check it out, patreon.com slash supergamerboys. We also have a $5 a month level where you can support us uh, and get those previous perks and the show notes each and every week. So if you want to know what we're going to be talking about uh, and want to have your voice heard here on the show, maybe you're not able to make it on the live stream on Monday nights and you want to make sure you get the news as soon as possible and want to leave your own thoughts on uh, the listener questions or on the nerdy news or what you've been playing, think about smartness at that $5 a month level and you can drop it right over there. Uh, comment right on the doc and have your voice heard. So if you want to be a part of the show, support us at five bucks a month. We'd appreciate it. Uh, $10 a month. You can be a super gamer sponsor and uh, get the shout out at the top of each and every episode, as well as all those previous perks, like the show notes, like the Patreon exclusive shows, like the ad free shows, uh, early access to shows and uh, the top dog tier Patreon producer, $15 a month. You get all of those glorious perks and the opportunity to pitch us a segment for the show. That's right. If you want to have your own, very own segment of the show, whether you're a part of it or you just pitch it for us to do uh, an idea, something you think would be fun to watch us do, <laughs> torture us with, whatever it might be, uh, think about supporting us at that Patreon producer tier. Uh, we love our Patreon producers. We've had some good ones through the years. I mean, Adrian was prior to being a host on the show. That's where Super Indie Boys originated. He would send in his little shorts that we uh, aired during the episode. Uh, even more recently, we've had Kajoma with his Kajoma's Card Game Corner, which you can have previously been able to find here on the show and can also find on our social media, TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you have a, a fun idea for a show segment or a sh- new show entirely, whatever it might be, Think about supporting us at that top dog tier and uh, pitch it to us. Just a disclaimer. It doesn't mean we always do the thing, but so far our track record is, I think, pretty much everything we've been pitched we've done. Uh, but I just want to say that within reason, we're not going to do a hot tub stream or something like that. I'm sorry. No, I will never take my shirt off on stream willingly. Um, so sorry. <laughs> uh, I hope Adrian heard that just as he's walking up. <laughs> Uh, you can also support us by going over to sgbstore.com where you can buy our merch. We have hats, uh, the dad cap. We have uh, t-shirts. We got stickers. We got coffee mugs. We got hoodies and sweatshirts. Whatever you need, we probably got it. We got it all. Trust me. We got toothpaste. We got... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Everything you could ever need in your life. We sell underwear. We sell... Actually, so I was looking through... Sorry, this is a tangent here. I was looking through some of the templates for different products we could sell. I'm pretty sure I saw like underwear or like boxers or something like that. I know there's swimsuits. We can we can do women's swimsuits and men's swimsuits, like sh- swim shorts and like bikinis and stuff. Just imagine a bikini with Adrian. That face. actually would be fun to design. I'm, not with our face on it, but like a super gamer boy. I have my Adrian's face right here. <laughs> You got to wear the brassiere part, too. You got to wear the top <laughs> and the bottom. Oh, man. Yeah, so go over to sgbstore.com. Check it out. Help support the show. Buy some cool, cool merch. Uh, and you can also support us over here on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Uh If you have Amazon Prime, which 
most of you do, or at least have access to someone's Amazon Prime, be sure to link that to your Twitch account because you get a free Twitch subscription each and every month with your Prime Gaming sub. Cost you zero dollars, you already have the Amazon Prime, and you can drop that free sub on our channel. You gotta remember to do it each and every month because it doesn't do it automatically, unfortunately. But if you drop that on our channel, you get to help support our channel, we get the five bucks. Free for you, five bucks for us, win-win. Uh, and you get access to our emotes and you get access to ad-free viewing on our channel. So if you wanna watch us on the Monday night streams, Tuesday, Thursday night streams, whenever we're streaming, and you're sick and tired of these ads popping up, not this ad in particular, but the, the ads that Twitch runs. Think about supporting us. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and uh, you get our emotes as well. So that is all that I have for the ad here. Now, let's get back to the show. Alrighty, Adrian, it's time for me to ask you the age-old mm -hmm. question. What you playing? What am I playing? Uh, not a whole lot. Still, still being pop it, pop it, pocket poppy over here. Um, analog pockets doing me well. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, having a blast, having a blast. Can't really complain at all. Um, been playing a little more Pokemon. Started to fire up some some Game Boy Advance stuff uh, for the first time. Looks just as crispy. Uh, I, I, it's unbelievable uh, how how good these games look in on this screen. And and even when you put them in, you know, dock mode on the TV, I am so glad I, I went ahead and got the dock. It's That's it's awesome. so, so awesome good. being able to play those games on the big screen like that. And they look great, too. Like you would think them being on an HD TV would make them all blurry and stuff. Whatever, whatever I, I said, I think I said this last week too. Whatever algorithm that analog is using is just, it's phenomenal. They look so good on HD TVs. Um, and then outside of the pocket realm, um, I think I mentioned too that I have been playing uh, Death Stranding Director's Cut, and uh, that's still going strong. On your phone? The way I've been playing? No, no, no. Uh, on uh, PS5. Oh, right, right. Okay. The Director's Cut. Yeah. Um, I've been playing it really slow, though. I've just been doing like one main delivery, you know, a, a day or so, just kind of taking it at my own pace. It's a nice. Um, it's a nice. Unwind after work. I don't know if that makes sense. Just like oh, being able totally. to to traverse the, the landscape on your own. Yeah. And just kind of be in solitude and just, you know, just trek on. And you not think about anything else but just having to make the delivery and stay alive you know yeah i don't know exactly. there's something there's something peaceful in that solitude even if you have stuff going on like if bt show up or if uh you know opposing uh delivery services mules show up something about being by yourself and just trying to figure it out how to get to a to, from point a to point b is really meditative and i really appreciate that about that game heck yeah yeah i mean the environments are beautiful and just mm -hmm relaxing uh and like the sound design we've talked to i think we talked about last week or a couple weeks ago when you talked about it before like just the soundtrack is phenomenal so whether it's like the orchestral soundtrack or the low roar stuff so every aspect of it is like very uh uh um like serene is that the word i'm thinking of just like very like mm -hmm. yeah just chill and calm until it isn't but even then even like in the tense moments it's like it just is more exciting than tense, I think. At least to me, it's just more like, ooh, okay, right. what's happening? Something's happening here. And then you like you take care of it and move on, and then it's back to like, all right, now I'm just chilling in the in the wilderness. Like, so yeah, I totally get that. Great game, mm -hmm. I love that game. It can be as exciting, Fantastic game, exciting or as chill as you want it to be. Because I've heard of people who just like blast through the deliveries as fast as possible, like just mainline it, go you know, golden path it. And it's like, all right, cool, you can get your your fix you know if you want to just get the story and interesting action and story and stuff like that but yeah there's something about just like kicking back and relaxing and really like just soaking, walk. soaking in that world you know walk and look around that's yeah. all you have to do yeah good stuff but how about yourself my good man what you been into man that delta right you've been you've been yes uh i mean i've been putting in a crap ton of hours in Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, obviously. I think I'm up to like uh, I think I'm almost to 50 hours now. 
No, oh, check and you out. And I'm only in chapter eight or I think eight or nine, maybe eight. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said before, I'm like, I'm not planning on platinum. I'm not, not going to platinum the game, but mm-hmm. I am not moving on to the next area within the game until I quote unquote a hundred percent it. Like every side quest I'm doing, uh, all the mini games that are available, I'm doing every possible mini game within each mini game kind of thing. Cause like some of them mm-hmm. have like different challenges. I'm doing all the challenges. I'm doing three starring all the, all the different mini games, stuff like that. That's what I'm doing and loving every moment of it. I know some people got to where I'm at and they're just like, Nope, no more mini games for me. Screw this. I got there. I'm like, bring yes. it on, bring it on, <laughs> bring on all the, I, as much chocobo racing as I can do. Give it to me. More Queen's Blood? Great. I get to ride a motorcycle and relive the mission from Final Fantasy Remake for a a a couple of minutes. Like, give it to me. Like a VR mission. Um, Yeah, I'm I'm loving every aspect of it. And yeah, I just got to an interesting part of the story as well. Uh, So I'm really excited about where it's going to turn next. Like, things are kind of... uh, It's an interesting location gets connected to another character in the Final Fantasy 7 universe mm-hmm. and also things are happening with Cloud that has me worried so I'm just yeah it's getting real interesting now oh, like alright okay I don't know what's going to happen next year um, so that's exciting anyways yeah Delta though I've been playing a lot of that and funny funny, funny enough I, I I mean, I've been jumping around a lot, so I can't really say talk to like, oh, I've put 20 hours into Pokemon Ruby or anything like that, like nothing. Uh, but I think the game I have played the most, I maybe put like two hours into Pokemon Black mm. on DS, which is just a random pick. Because <laughs> uh, I, as I've mentioned before on the show, I've never played any of the Pokemon games on DS or 3DS. Like basically anything after GBA, I had never touched. Uh, okay. because I didn't own it. Oh, you played Diamond G- and Pearl. You played Diamond and Pearl. I played the remakes on Switch. So Right, but yes. I'm saying you, you've you experienced something from that generation. Okay, yeah, you, you got me there. But I didn't I didn't originally experience it back in the DS days. Right. And so, um, yeah, so for me, I was just kind of like, wow, man, like I got, I got all these Game Boy games, all these Game Boy Color games, all these Game Boy Advance games, like, and I had a few DS games. I don't have a lot of them, but I have a couple on there. And I'm like, not just for the heck of it. Let's jump into this. And and my youngest son was sitting next to me when I was firing this up. So I'm like, ah, I don't want to do anything too intense because uh, not that I'm worried it's going to scare him. It's more just like at a moment's notice, I just need to be able to like <laughs> help him I and take care him. of him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like he's watching me play. So I'm like, hopefully it's a distraction enough. But also at any moment, he could just like do a backflip off a table. I was just getting ready to say he'll <laughs> like, hop up and do a backflip. <laughs> he's 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 like the evil can evil like daredevil of the family. And just out of nowhere, like he's like totally chill and calm, just like kicking it on the bed sitting back pillows watching me play a game and the next minute he's doing like he sits some, up he's, he's like, doing ah, he's, he's doing like flips think and I'm gonna somersaults. do a mick twist real quick <laughs> he just does like somersaults and flips across the bed accidentally goes off the edge <laughs> hits his head on the on the closet door it's like what the heck like we were just relaxing two seconds ago how do you crack your head open what's happening it's kid zoomies man <laughs> Any, exactly them. anyways so i'm like oh let's fire some a Pokemon game and I was like, you know what, this is one I've never touched before. I don't I don't know anything about it. I don't even think I've, anyone's ever told me about it. So I was like, Pokemon Black, here we go. Um oh, I'm excited. I let him pick my starter. I'm like, what do you want? Yeah, this one I showed him all three of them and he picked Snivy, Snivy, Snivy. Mm-hmm. Or the, the grass, Snivy. The grass one, which kind of hurt. Snake Ivy. Kind of kind of hurt a little bit because I don't think I've ever picked grass type in my 30 years of So you've been Pokemon. picking wrong this whole time is what you're telling me right now. I'm a fire guy through and through. Oh no, I take that back. In Sword and Shields, uh, I picked Grookey. <laughs> that was okay, my first good. time. You picked picking. the right you picked right one time. That I, was my I'll other than slide. that. I've always been fire. You are forgiven, my son. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh yeah, so uh, we we picked Snivy. I'm like, all right, I guess that's okay. The other ones seem cooler, but whatever. Uh Oshawott looked kind of cool. And what's the other one? Is it is it the monkey one? I'm trying to remember who's what's the fire. No, it's a pig. What's his name? 
Oh, uh, Lord. Um, Whatever his name is. Anyways. Keep talking. I'll remember it. Yeah. So I haven't gotten very Tepic? far. Isn't it Tepic? Tepic. That's it. Um, But yeah, I'm, again, I can't speak much to the story because I only put a couple hours in, if that, maybe like an hour and a half. But um, Delta runs fantastic. It feels really good. Even playing DS games with a dual screen. Honestly, it works great because the iPhone screen is so tall. It's long enough that... It just stacks the screens on top of each other and works really good. I haven't played in horizontal mode. Um, the skin I have kind of, I don't like how tiny the screens are in horizontal mode. Like I wish it took up, I wish less of the screen was like a uh, uh, skin and more of it was actually like the game. It's kind of weird mm-hmm. how the, D, the DS horizontal skins kind of suck. Uh, but in vertical mode, <clears throat> yeah, it works great. Like having the touch controls on the bottom screen even works. So you just, you don't have to use the buttons. Like you actually tap on the screen just like you would through the DS. Um, I haven't had any weird hitches or gra- graphical glitches. Everything runs smooth. Save states are amazing for, you know, cheesing the game, which I know is cheating, but <laughs> it's great. Uh, and uh, yeah, overall Delta is just a win in my book. Um I played, oh, what was the, I was playing some Dr. Mario as well. And like Dr. Mario, obviously it's a Game Boy game. It's hundred years old, but ran great. Looks great. Feels great. Soundtrack in that game is 10 out of 10. <laughs> it's freaking, uh, you choose fever or chill. I, I was like, you know, let's turn on some chill today. I usually go fever, but I'm saying, I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go chill. It was, it was a good time. So yeah, Delta emulators, the, the bomb man, especially like. I got super hyped when you got the analog pocket. I'm like, ooh, maybe that's my next investment. And then I got this. I'm like, no, this is a better use of my funds. It's free and I don't have to buy that's physical. That's fair. Like, because building out a physical game collection is hundreds of dollars per game. In some case, if it's Pokemon games, it's like, all right, here's 120 bucks to buy this Pokemon game where, <laughs> you know, to be able to just like, oh, okay, cool. I got the, got it digitally. I'm thankful every day. I don't know. I don't know that pain. I got mine. I'm yeah. good. So that was the big motivator of me getting the pocket because I already had all this stuff. So why not? Yeah. So Delta's, I, Delta's worth it. It feels good in the hand. And, oh, I don't know if we talked about it earlier, but it has the controller support. Like you were talking about, you used your backbone with it. Worked just fine. Works great. Uh, I haven't tested it yet, but I've heard of other people using like DualSense, Xbox, whatever is any Bluetooth controller you have, anything that connects to your phone works with Delta, which I'm like, that's incredible. Like, that sounds great. Honestly, what I want to look into is I want to, because I feel like I've seen it before, I think, or maybe I imagined it. I don't know. Maybe I imagined it, but I feel like I've seen a grip where like your phone slides into it and then it has buttons so it's vertical is that a thing or am i imagining that i think it is i think hyperkin makes it okay. now that you mention it because honestly i'm having the same form factor as a game boy like sliding it in and having the buttons right there that might be kind of sick cuz like see i'm wondering i want to know what the ds is what the ds looks like uh lengthwise because when i plug my backbone into it is it just going to be the screen side by side because that would make the most sense, right? Because the the backbone is horizontal. Yeah, and that's the thing. I don't like the horizontal skins on DS. It they, they, it, it shrinks the screens too much. They're too tiny. The skins go opinion. away when I put when I plug a controller in. Oh, okay. See, that's yeah, I, yeah. I didn't I didn't realize that. So, mm-hmm. interesting. So maybe that wouldn't work then with like that hyperkin because like it might be covered a little bit if it covers part of the screen or something like that. Like I don't know. I don't right. know how those. How well, they, I. Anyways, I, I think the, yeah. I think the hyperkin is more of like it's not necessarily something that plugs in. It's more of uh, it, it's able to focus your touches through those buttons on the on the outside I see. part. I see. Mm-hmm. See, I would love like something that just like slid on and just gave you like some good physical buttons that just worked. I don't you mean know, like, like a, a backbone, but I don't want a horizontal. I just like imagine oh. if it had the same form factor as like a Game Boy Color or whatever, like a Game Boy Advance SP. Game Boy Advance like, was originally landscape. I never had that one. I had the SP. I went right from Game oh, Boy Color okay. to SP. My brother had the Game Boy Advance, the standard one, but I was uh, I skipped that generation. Went right to SP. <laughs> I just borrowed. That my was game. the most comfortable one by I borrowed, a country mile. Borrowed my my brother's Game Boy Advance whenever it, it, if he let me. He was usually pretty pretty against it <laughs> unless i stole it from him <laughs> but 
yeah, so that's it. That's what I've been playing. Good stuff. And Kingdom Hearts 2, I guess. Uh, I guess a little you update. You guess? Yeah, well, okay. As I, I kind of told you a little bit before the show, I don't hate it, but I'm not loving it either. It's kind of like, oh, this is... I'm having fun with it. Don't get me wrong. It is fun. Mm-hmm. But I'm also not like on fire for it but i don't want that to sound like i hate it either it's kind of just like oh this is like this kind of a fun whatever game but i'm i feel like i'm still early in it like i've beat i've gotten through the tutorial i beat the first worlds it's like i feel like i haven't got enough story to like hook me quite yet so um, that's Garrett, what i'm, I'm waiting sorry for. to tell you if you didn't like it at second one uh, i'm going to go ahead and automatically assume you hated it Okay. Okay. All right. Well, you I, hate it. I hate Kingdom Hearts too. You hate I'm one of my it. one of my favorite games of all time. You hate it, <laughs> and I'm not streaming How it dare anymore. You? I hate it. I'm not. I'm done with it. Forget it. How dare you? <laughs> no, I'm going to continue to stream it. I want to beat it because um, I have to because it's in the contract that we have to talk about on Super Gamer Book Club with you and Angel. So um, <laughs> I gotta gotta yep. finish that up. Um, but and actually a little update on that. I'm I might be streaming it tomorrow instead of Adrian streaming on Twitch. Well, this is gonna be confusing. If you're listening on podcast services, I've already streamed. But if you're watching live on Twitch, uh, me and Adrian might switch this week. I might take the Tuesday, Adrian might take the Thursday. So if you're hearing this on Wednesday, go watch the VOD, because you missed me. But uh, anyways, that's it's up in the air. You'll 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 stay tuned to social media, you'll find out. Um but anyways, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to playing more of it. I just like Again, I'm not like dying. I'm I know. Like, I'm just giving you a hard time. What's going to happen next? It's more just like, all right, let's jump in and kind of. Yeah, I, I mean, we were talking just, about just it. Waiting, we were talking so. about it before the show, too. I said, I think Kingdom Hearts is a product of people who really, really love Kingdom Hearts. I think it hit them at the perfect time. They were the perfect age. Mm-hmm. They were uh, 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 an anime JRPG fan and a Disney fan, and everything collided at the same exact perfect time to give. Uh, like the the chemical explosion, which yeah. is Kingdom Hearts, totally. So, yeah. I and I said I'd be fine if you walked away. I'm not. I don't. I know you not necessarily gonna love it the same way I do, right? You're not thinking. You're not workshopping a tattoo as we speak. But <laughs> not yet. If you can walk away being like, I can see why you like this so much. That's all I can. That's all I can ask for. You know. Okay. It may not be for me, but I can see why you like it the way you do. Cool. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We will see. Um, all right. Well, that is it for the show. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you who stopped by the live stream over at twitch.tv slash the super gamer boys. Uh, and who check it out later on podcast apps and over at youtube.com slash super gamer boys. You guys are awesome. Uh, we are trying so hard and, uh, getting so close to, I, I mean, we got a ways to go, but it's, I I look at the numbers on YouTube. We're getting close to that 500. I'm excited about that. I think we're like, we are, we're trucking, man. We're at that 381. We got a a bump in the last couple of weeks. Like, cause uh, we actually, we we lost a couple as a bummer. And then all of a sudden like, boom, 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 boom. We went back up and like exceeded what we had before. So I'm like, yes, heck yeah. So we're at 381. We would love to hit 500 by the end of the year. So that's our goal, both here on Twitch and on YouTube. If we can hit 500 on both, that would be killer. So please follow us on Twitch. It's free to follow. We would love love that. Um, and uh, if you're over on YouTube, we would love it if you subscribed. It's totally free to do that and helps us uh, get closer to that 500 goal. Um, you can support us over at patreon.com slash supergamerboys starting at just a dollar a month. Remember what we talked about earlier? Go check it out. Got some good stuff. Uh, SGBstore.com. You can buy some sweet merch. Buy the hats, buy the socks, buy the underwear. Maybe I'll make some Super Game Boys underwear. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, rate and review us where you can. We'd appreciate it. iTunes, Spotify. I think you can do ratings on all those places. Uh, very much appreciated. Yes, Lula. Uh, we were talking, actually, it wasn't underwear. We were talking about doing swimsuits because they also offer. <laughs> on our merch store we could do uh, uh bikinis and swim shorts so look forward yep. to a bikini with adrian's face on the top um <laughs> shout out to jack yep, sriracha yep, yep, yep. <laughs> shout out to jack sriracha and yate and dj trues for allowing us to use their music on the show today you've been listening to jack sriracha and yate make sure to find them on apple music and spotify links will be in the show description over on youtube and podcast apps here 
Uh, you can find us during the week at supergamerboys.com, Twitter and Instagram at supergamerboys. Uh, you can find me over on Twitter and Instagram at gmorlang. Adrian, where can the people find you at? You can find me any and everywhere at Homeboy. There we go. <laughs> Lula says, I'll take super across the butt. So just Adrian's face well, on the top you know and what? super on Too the bad. bottom. <laughs> You're a mod. Now you have to do it. Now I have to make one. Now you have to model it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you goofed. Oh, you done goofed. Um, uh, all right, Adrian. I, that's all I got for this week. Uh, why don't you take it away? <laughs> Sounds like a plan, folks. Thank you for hanging out with us for another week of the Super Gamer Voice podcast. As always, we love to tell you that we appreciate any and every form of support that you can give us, whether that's hanging out with us here on the stream, listening on the audio podcast services that we offer it, uh, excuse me, that we offer it on, or just telling a friend to check us out. It all helps uh, and it all gets us further to our goal of 500 for the end of the year. Um, I don't really have too much more. So I guess without further ado, that'll do it for this week. And we are the Super Gamer Boys. And we'll catch you on the flippity flop. I got to get designed. I got to make a, a bikini now, apparently. <laughs> for you to wear? I mean, that's, for, that's, that's, what we no. that's what we need. <laughs> Adrian that's what we need. That's what you need. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. Right that's, that's what we need. That's what the world needs. I, I, okay, you know what? T at 10K subscribers... 10k no, no. Adrian will put on a bikini I'm, and, and, and <laughs> it's stream it's gonna be a big Bye. one piece <laughs>